What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Apple Mouth Podcast. My name's Mary Bell, and I'm an ISFP. My name is Blake, and I'm an ENFP. And what those four letters mean are basically what our MBTI results are. The MBTI test being a personality test. Mm-hmm. And uh, I noticed you're an introvert, I, yes. right? So. Also, side note, it's 11-11, so make Ooh, a wish. Make a wish, everyone. So, what in your in your understanding, what's mm-hmm. it like being an introvert? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I I like it. To be honest, I enjoy my own company. Mm. Yeah. Do you, Do you feel like you get energized by being with people, or does it drain you? It I it drains me. Right. I get energized doing things by myself. Mm. Yeah. I can see that. What's it like being an extrovert? The opposite. <laughs> you get energy when you hang out with people or I, I find now since recently I've quit my job right. and I have more time in the day just to be by myself mm-hmm. um, we've talked about this when we were hanging out was like I, I was feeling very apathetic and kind of mm-hmm. uh, not cynical but yeah. very much like a jaded kind of nothing nothing interesting right now so mm-hmm. I'm just kind of like chilling basically that's like that's like the socially acceptable way to say that you're like kind of withdrawn and you don't like it is like oh i'm just kind of chilling on my own do you feel do you feel like your energy is drained or yeah 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 <laughs> like being alone actually drains my energy more than i thought it would dang and was it like that when you were living out there but um when you were living on your own not or... really because i did have roommates that i would see pretty pretty often mm, right. and i was working at that time so every day i was going to see my friends, uh, my coworkers, and whatnot. So. Oh, you had more. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. So. Yeah, as an extrovert, I definitely I noticed it too when I was going to parties every now and then with my coworkers, um, especially being around people that I didn't know yet, but like were friends of friends and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I felt after the party, I always felt like that was. I felt like awake, like energized, like you mm. said. Whereas like now. No, I'm not working. I'm spending all day to myself. Right. I just feel like it's it's way easier to get tired now. Oh. You know? Oh. And, um, yeah, maybe I just gotta make more friends. <laughs> <laughs> right? As an extrovert, it sounds like you need at least five to seven friends mm-hmm. for you to constantly be hanging out with someone i was thinking too like at my happiest times before moving back to california it was when i was with rotc because we're all like basically soldiers you know being trained like soldiers right i have this group and then before that it was being in a high school band i was or in a choir like a church choir Oh, we're okay. like, oh, I'm the bass guy. We have all these other guys here filling their roles. I'm filling my role. This is the shit, you know? Like, right. This is where I feel at home. Mm. But this is the first time, like, moving back to California, this is the first time I've only had, like, one or two friends that I consistently see, you being one of them. Right. And um, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm not complaining or anything, but I do miss those times of, like, having a big posse. Right. Being like one of the guys or something, you know? Yeah, no, I see that. I see that. And I, I get that vibe from you, especially he... since you are in a band. Mm-hmm. And when you do perform, I just see how, like, I see how happy it makes you. <laughs> and I see how stoked you get. Nice. And especially when you're meeting other members of different bands. Mm-hmm. You That's like... so much fun to me. Yeah. Yeah, it is. To you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to you. Oh, see, I'm the guy at the show that's like, oh, dude, that's the drummer from the opening band. Let's go Let's go talk to them. Or like, oh, those are the guys that I met from the last show. Right. I should go like say hi and show my face, you know? Yeah. But that's, in a way, that's also part of your job. True. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, so in, when you were in high school, did you were you in any clubs? I was in the knitting club. Knitting club? <laughs> Oh, isn't the marching band also considered a club? Uh, yeah, I guess it was an after school. It was I was in the marching band and I was in 
the drum line mm. for a bit. Were you in a jazz band too or something? Um, In middle school I was, okay. but I wanted to join the jazz band in high school, but since elective classes and other stuff like that, I I kept I kept picking uh, wind ensemble over jazz band. Mm. And honestly, I don't regret it. I love playing my clarinet. Nice. But yeah, it was a uh, marching band. And to be honest, I enjoyed marching band way more than I enjoyed the drum line. Mm. Because with drum line, there were less people. So I was forced to be acquaintances or... I was basically forced to be social four days out of the week, mm-hmm. and I was forced to be social with people I didn't even like. Ah, uh, right. So yeah. you had to, like, you're kind of forced to put on your extrovert hat in yeah. that moment. Yeah, and it wasn't fun. Mm. <laughs> but in the marching band, I had a way different experience because I actually had, I had friends from uh the same grade as me. Yep. And it was easy it was easier for me to stick to them whereas in the drum line I was the freshman that no one really liked cuz I didn't talk to anyone. Oh, I didn't know this. Yeah. You were that guy or that girl that was like yeah. no one talks to them, no one's like reaching out basically. Yeah. Well, I had this one friend. He was in my clarinet wind ensemble yes. group. And so at the beginning we would I kind of stuck with him, mm-hmm. but he had more of an extroverted personality, so right. he was able to go out of his way and actually talk to people. He, his default would be to like, like um, not abandon you, but he would be able to move on and talk to more people. Yeah, just because yeah, he had Where that. With, yeah, exactly. Where with me, I kind of just saw, I observed Mm-mm. since we're talking about MBTI, I observed how their personalities were and how they talked, and it just felt too clicky for me. Ah, yeah, I can see that. And as soon as I saw that, I immediately just felt withdrawn. Mm Mm-mm. Yeah. So you've seen other people going out, having their, exercising their extroverted nature. Yeah. Forming these cliques, organizing. And you're like, I'm not about that, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I see that. So in those uh, clubs that you were in, were there like officers or roles that people had? So they had like a president, vice president, treasurer, anything Mm -hmm. like that? Uh... Not like that, mm. but uh, we had dr- we had the drum major, which was basically he led the marching band. But he was also a student. Yeah, he was also a student. Okay. He was usually a junior or a senior, mm-hmm. and um, we had section leaders, mm-hmm. and that was basically it. But no, like inter. Uh, how do I say this? Hierarchy stuff. Yeah, hierarchy like basically type hierarchy. Stuff. So like, there's no. PR guy, there's no... no... Okay. Yeah, if you were a freshman, it was kind of an unspoken rule that you were immediately at the bottom of the food chain. Well, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So, I asked because when I was in a church choir in high school... Mm. Um, you were bass, right? I was a bass, yeah. So, yeah. all the low notes and all the, yeah. cool, all the cool harmony parts are like, Blake, can you do this? I'm like, hell yeah, I can do that. Right. And I felt... I thought that was super fun for me. Choir is like some of the most fun times I had in high school, Mm. if not the most fun times. But uh, when I was a junior, they had me be a a public relations officer. Right. And I didn't know it at the time, but looking back, that's so... It kind of shows like they knew what kind of personality I had and what job would fit me. Mm Because the PR guy is the one that talks to the other clubs. Right. Or talks to teachers about certain things. Right. And just kind of like, it's kind of like the mascot of the group in a yeah. way. And as the one guy who could do bass vocals and like, I knew like, I was friends with like the rock kids, the punk rock kids and the metal heads. Mm-hmm. But I was also extroverted enough to have that kind of clicky mentality of hanging with like the well-known people mm-hmm. or um, basically whoever's like running things, I would like be in their entourage. Mm. So... It's cool knowing that even back then, people saw that side of me and then, like, gave me a role to fit that as a PR officer. Oh. And um, and then, like, in the next year, uh, I would have been the president, but I ended up quitting. But long story short, like, that was the most fun time. And 
no looking back knowing what i know now it makes sense that i was made the pr officer mm. so um this whole yeah. extroversion introversion thing it belongs to the sub trait uh, or or like subdivision of mind mm. in the mbti test which basically means the mind is the trait that determines how we interact with our environment so there you go extroversion you're more uh friendly towards strangers introversion you're more withdrawn and would rather spend time with yourself right that's how you um basically go about your your day right yeah so for you you have isfp so the s part there is for energy right uh i'm a en so i believe mine is more intuition Mm -hmm. and yours is more observant yeah so let's break that down real quick energy is the second sub trait which Mm -hmm. uh it shows where we direct our mental energy right Uh, as as an isfp first of all with your results were you overwhelmingly observant or was it more like kind of cut down the middle it says i'm 45 percent intuitive and i'm 55 percent observant Mm. so you got a good balance going yeah and um for my description it says I'm highly practical, pragmatic, and down to earth. Mm -hmm. And I have strong habits and I focus on what is happening or has already happened. Hmm. Yeah. That's for the energy side? Unobservant? Yeah. Would you, would you agree with that? Does that sound accurate to you? How would you describe down to earth? Um, you're a realist, pragmatic kind of mind. Yeah. Right. You, yeah. You're not much of a, how do I say, like, visionary kind of, what if fish were once birds, you know? Like, no. Like, you don't have that. I don't have you. that. Right. I do sometimes think that way. hmm But I tend to just focus on what's in front of me. Right, right. And so, my own personal experiences. Well, I think observant and intuitive would both kind of fit that. Because mm. to be intuitive, you also have to be in the moment, right? But so well, what is how? It, so what what you're what you were reading off of? Does it say anything for intuition or intuitive? No, it just says what you're you mostly got. observant. Mostly observant. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about intuition. Okay. But I know yours might have something to say on that because you're more intuition. I'm looking at a different intuitive? one. I'm just I'm just on Google Images right now. But, oh, okay. But yeah, I would have to dive deep into what the difference is with intuitive and observant but it sounds like intuitive is the one that's ready to just go with the flow and and like come up with answers on the spot yeah whereas observance more like let me let me see how things play out and i'll pick whatever is the most successful or pragmatic right yeah so you can be intuitive and act in the moment but doesn't necessarily mean you're being pragmatic yeah i think for me I'm only pragmatic if I need to be. Because if it's my personal life, mm. I'm usually a go with the flow type person. Mm-hmm. But if, let's say, if school gets involved, my job gets involved, right? I ha- I feel like I do have to be pragmatic. Right. So that's so you are more that that makes sense since you are kind of split down the middle with that. Yeah. But your default is much more observant, you'd say. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because. As an EMT, yes, you can't. It's important to go with the flow, but you also have to be thinking five, six steps ahead. Mm. Because if you don't, if you don't visualize all the possible outcomes, and you're focused on that one thing, then bad things could potentially oh, happen. Yeah, well, that kind of convinces me that I'd be a bad EMT because. <laughs> I'm much more like, I got this one option, and I'm going to knock it out of the park, or I'm going to have to figure out a new one after that. But I'm not thinking like four steps ahead or anything. Yeah. If anything, I feel smart if I'm thinking one step ahead. Oh. <laughs> like, if I think one step ahead and it turns out that way, I'm just like, yeah, I'm a genius. Yeah. That's why I thrived in the kitchen, working at Freebirds. Ah. Yeah. Hmm. I always had at least three or four different things happening in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And that's how I stayed five, six steps ahead. Ah, uh, because you've already seen like certain patterns emerge from that yeah. chaos, right? Yeah. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. 
So for the other two, we match. We're both FPs at the end, right? So right. With the third sub trait, it's called nature. Mm-hmm. It deals with thinking versus feeling, mm-hmm. and it's the trait that determines how we make decisions and cope with emotions. Right. So, for for the feeling versus thinking, were you overwhelmingly on one side or the other? Um. Or is it more split no. down the middle? I was forty nine percent thinking and fifty one percent feeling. Yep. That, so that's like. <laughs> I was there near down 50, the middle. 50, yeah. yeah. So I guess this, that kind of shows that you've got a certain level of maturity because you have such a balance between these two traits, you know? Oh, thank you. Because, like, you know, I would imagine someone who's really immature would be, like, 90% on one side for all of them, you know? Right. Oh, thank you. Thank so, you very much. Good on you for that. Good on you for being boring. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Squares are cool. <laughs> it's hip to be square. <laughs> All right, so let's read this. Nature. Oh, I already read, I read, I read that. Yeah. Part. But so, yeah. So, Feeling and thinking. We, which one would you say you are? I definitely feel more you... like a feeling side. I even say, in, even in my vocab choices, like, mm. I tend to say, oh, I feel like blah, blah, blah. Or I feel this, I feel that. Mm. So even just my word usage shows that I'm already thinking of the feeling side more. Yeah. Which is which makes sense cuz like if you're being if you're if you're basing your decisions off of intuition, mm-hmm. then your gut feeling would be how you'd make your decisions, right? So right. whereas if you're th- if you're more of the thinking type, it makes sense to be observant cuz mm. cuz you got to observe first and then you're thinking about what you're seeing. Right. As opposed to just going in and and just winging it, winging it. Which mm. is what I tend to do. You just tend to wing it. I, I yeah, I just tend to wing it. One of the questions that it asks that I remember remember that I can feel like kind of goes to this point mm. is, agree or disagree. You tend to live a very methodical life, and I put like <laughs> hardcore disagree on that. Like, my life isn't very methodical. Like you see my room, it's right. It's not super bad, but it's also my my bed isn't made. Yeah, it's like I don't have schedules set up oh right. dude uh, i thrive in scheduling and mm-hmm. making lists for myself because that's how i stay organized mm. yeah but so that's probably more your thinking side yeah because it comes up like down the middle that way so yeah it comes up it comes up but the way i approach it isn't very methodical what do you but mean if i have a deadline i can make that deadline but but i'm the type of person that won't make a plan to meet the deadline Mm -hmm. but i will somehow meet the deadline (laughs) do you tend to cram a lot um sometimes Mm -hmm. but not too badly not too badly anymore Mm. i remember like 90 percent of what i was doing was all the night before it was due yeah definitely when i first started college it (laughs) i was a horrible student (laughs) But now... More like you're a horrible factory worker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Oh, God. Yeah, I can't do it. I, like... Mm. I thrive in chaos. Right, right. But I have a... Me- there's a there's a method to the madness right. for so, me. So you do have a fondness for schedules and shit. Yes, I do. Yeah. I do. I feel like schedules... I mean, I know that they're useful... Mm-hmm. But in my head, I'm just like, as long as I'm there by this time, I'll just I'll just show up to class and it'll it'll happen, right? You know, like the the knowledge will either sink in or it won't, or it won't, and mm. it's <laughs> it's kind of more irresponsible, I think. But it's like I tend to just let the odds decide. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of roll your dice and yeah, I just have you high- just- I have your a, fingers. <laughs> I'm the I'm the guy I'm the character that has high luck stat and I just keep rolling for intuition like just Dude just you're Kazuma yeah, yeah. <laughs> So with, God. <laughs> with the last sub trait, which is tactics, right. it pits judging versus prospecting. And um, tactics is the traits that reflects our approach to work, planning and decision making. Oh yeah, this is where I thrive in. Mm. I am prospecting. By a by a majority. By sixty seven percent. Oh yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. So 
I'm I'm also there. I've got a majority on prospecting. Right. And what that sounds like to me is when you're judging something, mm-hmm. you definitely want to have all the data ahead of you. Mm-hmm. Like you want someone else to figure out the data first. And then you just work off, all right, logically, what's the best solution to this problem? Right. Whereas like prospecting, you know, you think of like gold miners, the prospects. Like, you, you know that the old guy from Toy Story? Yeah. He's a prospect. Right. So like he goes out there in an open land with no, there's no GPS or anything, you know? It's like, right. where's the gold? Well, I got to go out there and find it myself. Yeah. So that's the prospecting side. I'm, you're physically go out, like reaching your hand out into the dark to figure yeah. out what's going on. Yeah. And that's what it says right here too, where um, we're very good at improvising and spotting opportunities. Mm, right. And we tend to be flexible, relaxed, and we like to keep our options open. Yeah. yeah. You don't like to be like boxed down on, into something. Yeah. Right? But I feel like that's kind of where the Aquarius trait comes in. What do you mean? That aqu- which which Aquarius trait would this be? How we're quirky, and ah, we okay. don't tend to go with the flow. Yeah, I've always kind of felt like an outsider misfit kind yeah. of dude. Yeah, because like I was always, you know, when they talk about like the whole um, the frog memes of like the 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 psychology behind the frog meme, why it's why it does <laughs> what it does is because yeah. it's this creature that like it li- it's born in the water first grows up in the water and then like transitions into a land creature right so like as a symbol it's always used as the thing that goes between two different worlds right almost like the avatar kind of yeah and with that whole um misfit mentality Mm -hmm. i definitely kind of relate to that side of like yeah i'm a filipino american who can't really speak the language yet you know, growing up. Right. But right. I did know a lot about our culture growing up and I did I was kind of like in that middle ground. So like when I went to the Philippines for high school, I didn't fit cuz I was the American kid. Right. And then when I was growing up here, I also felt like I didn't fit because I was a Filipino American. And pro- there was also you probably felt a disconnect too with that What do you mean? You were unplugged from the US life. When I was in high school? Yeah, when yeah. you were in high school in the Philippines. Oh, dude, heavily. Like, yeah. I'm, one of the, my main emotions I remember feeling in high school was frustration. Mm-hmm. Just from the fact that I can't express all these ideas and thoughts that I have in an efficient way because I'm not proficient enough in, in Filipino mm-hmm. and they weren't proficient enough in English to understand me. Because, you know, I'd be ta- I'd, right. I would try to speak in English and then I would just be speaking too fast and mm. they wouldn't be able to catch on. And then in, in, in Tagalog or Filipino, I just didn't have the vocab or the, the cultural background to like really make yeah. a statement or anything. Wait, say that again? In the Philippines? Yeah, in the Philippines. So like, let's say I wanted to express a certain like deep emotion or, or thought. Right. I I wasn't al- I wasn't able to because I didn't have the tools, so mm. I felt frustrated. From yeah, that. it kind of, in a more lighthearted sense, when I went when I went home, mm. um, I had two cousins, and it was my brothers and I h- hanging out with them, mm-hmm. and my brother Matt isn't very prof- he was he was kind of like you. Yeah. And he almost made the decision of going to college in the Philippines. Just to, like, reconnect with that side? Yeah, Mm. to reconnect. But he would... The only person he would have would have been my aunt. Ah. We wouldn't... We wouldn't be there. My parents wouldn't have been there. Yeah, yeah. And... I think... There was just this look on his high that he made the right decision. There's a look on his what? There was a look in his high that he made the right decision. Oh, his eyes. Yeah, yeah. Solely because... My cousins were trying to tell him something. Mm-hmm. In Cebuano? Yeah, in Cebuano. Yeah. And he was trying to tell them something in English because he didn't know the words. For, he didn't know Cebu- the Cebuano the translation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I just remember my cousin Dex going to uh, our our cousin Ikim and he mm-hmm. was just like, Oi, Bert's. Unsane. Like, what is this? Uh-huh. And 
Matt like was, referring to what Matt's saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you just see my cousin with a beer in his hand and a cigarette. And he's scratching his head. <laughs> and he's taking a... <laughs> he took a drag. He just went... <sighs> scratches his head again, takes a drink. Uh-huh. And he's scratching his head because he can't, he can't, he doesn't have the, he didn't have the tools right, to right. translate. And my brother was getting just as frustrated. Mm-hmm. And me knowing the translation and having the tools for it, mm-hmm. I was just laughing. Yeah, because you knew what they're trying to get to. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> That's all the funny. <laughs> I was but yeah, so trolled. imagine that, but yeah. like three and a half years of that nonstop. Yeah. That's why. That's, That's where I was at of like, yeah. I can't talk about these I, I wanted to talk about like why I like metal music and like because right. when you listen to metal music, you read the lyrics. It's it's not, it's not pop songwriting. It's not like re- super relatable shit. You know, right? It's if anything, it's the opposite of relatable because it's such an intense aggression or intense like morbidity. Yeah. That like people don't think about that stuff very often. So it probably reflected how you felt a lot too. Yeah, yeah, especially with like the whole family drama and stuff like right yeah the teenage angst like yeah being a misfit i mean there's a band called the misfits and they right you can get their t-shirts at every single hot topic because they're so and spencer's (laughs) yeah yeah, because it's so it's so ingrained in like that that high school life of here's the cool kids here's the not cool kids here's the ones in the middle you know and then there's misfits all around and Right. For different reasons. Some of them are just socially awkward. Mm. Or some of them would just come from diff- way different backgrounds like me, you know? Right. Do you feel like a misfit now? Or? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I what, what would I be comparing myself to. Because when I was working in Fremont, I didn't feel like a misfit at all. I felt like I belonged in that team. It just feels like having that outcast ostracized feeling Mm. is such a kid mentality almost because when you're in high school maybe yeah because i feel like when you're when you are in high school there's certain criteria you have to meet to be cool yeah and if you don't meet those criteria then you immediately have to start looking for groups Mm -hmm. just to survive yeah (laughs) and if you don't meet those criteria for every group then you basically don't fit in right and the only place you can fit in is the outcast group Mm -hmm. and and they're not even really a group it's more just like they're just like running around looking for I mean, yeah. they're, they're like frogs going into different ponds. Yeah. You know, like, I would go to my choir meetups, and I would be the weird guy. I'd be the misfit, because I'm into metal and punk. Right. Everyone else are goody two-shoes, freaking Josh Groban listeners and whatnot, you know? <laughs> and no disrespect to Josh Groban. He's a great singer. Right. But, and like, Phil I want, yeah, <laughs> I wanted to talk about, like, speed, like, thrash metal. Right. And, like, Slayer and all this, like, dark shit. Mm. I want, you know, and then... There's no one to talk to with it, or or very like we would be able to talk about just very basic level, um, or surface level music, right? And then, but then when I was with like the sporty guys, mm-hmm. the playing basketball or whatnot, or like the jocks or the 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 super well known kind of trendy mm-hmm. hip guys, the Instagram models. I, I also didn't fit in because I wasn't a super great player. Mm. I was a good team player, like. I remember we were playing against juniors as sophomores. Uh-huh. And the thing about basketball in the Philippines is that everybody wants to be Allen Iverson or the guy that, like, does a crazy play and, like, does some backwards layup or something. Like, you, you see players go for the backwards layup, which is such a hard move to pat, to actually do. Right. You see so many kids trying to do that because it's flashy. They want to be flashy. mm mm-hmm. Like... Especially like League of Legends, like everyone wants to be the mid lane assassin because they right. have the, they have the flashiest plays. I'm the best, you know. Right. And they thrive on that one v one kind of mentality. Mm-hmm. And growing up go- playing basketball here, I knew how to play my role. I knew that I wasn't fast enough or creative enough to like be that Allen Iverson character. Right. But I knew that if I 
like if I make it so that my star player can be open for a shot like by like doing a pick and roll or something, mm-hmm. then I'd be the guy doing the pick. His mm-hmm. his defender would be caught up on me and then the star player would be free to do an open shot and make points. And they didn't they didn't recognize that in in our first few games because they just they just let us play how we normally play on the playground mm-hmm. and all these guys would just like go for dumb shots or like wouldn't be able to get open because the, mm-hmm. enemy, the enemy team knew how to play defensively mm-hmm. but once my coach saw that yeah i don't get much play time but i know how to set a pick i know how to play like a team mm-hmm. get my star player open he put me in and we started demolishing we were just like racking up points here like right. they had no answer yeah. Because they're not used to playing against a team that has someone who knows how to play w- as a team. Mm-hmm. So once I was, like, setting picks, it was over. Like, we just started winning everything. Mm. It just sounds like they didn't believe in teamwork. Yeah, because yeah, they weren't used to it. Ah. Uh. But here's the misfit who has experience in a different pond. Right. Being like, oh, what if, what if we just played, like, together instead of, like, giving it to this one guy all the time? Mm. And they're like, all right, let's try it. And then immediately just success because no one had an answer. See, I think I got lucky in high school Mm. because I always had the same group of friends. Okay. That my freshman year, it was kind of rocky. Or my freshman year, I had two friends. Mm. But then my sophomore year, we kind of got into a groove where every lunch we'd meet in the B cafeteria and we'd meet at the very back of the uh at the very back it was kind of like almost a how i met your mother thing where that was our table for three years Mm. and that was it we Mm. sat in the same well sometimes we would we would switch seats and stuff like that but 90 percent of the time but 90 yeah 90 90 percent of the time we would it was always the site it was always the exact same seats it was always Oh, you've already had this class before lunch. Let me copy the homework real quick. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that that was it. Who is this? So, what is this clique made out of again? Like, is it just all musicians or something? Or? No, it wasn't musicians. Was it the misfits group kind of thing, of like people who don't fit into others? Yes and no, Mm-mm. because out of the six of us, or. Out of the five of us, so there were always five consistent <laughs> people. Yeah, five consistent people, and including um, yourself. Yeah, including me. And every year there was always someone new that came into the table. Uh huh. And it was the consistent five. Yeah. With occasional yeah. like six man kind of. Yeah. Thing. Or we would. There would be a. There would be a transfer student because it was a military high school. Oh, okay. And um, every six months or so, or like every change of the semester, Mm -hmm. there was always a new student, and my friends were always bringing in the strays. Oh, yeah. See, it is a kind of misfit kind of thing of like, it's almost like here's the the neutral pool, and then you could find out where you want to hang out after. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it was me and my friend Hemi. Mm -hmm. Shout out to her. She's actually an amazing pianist. Nice. And she she's a she's an amazing flute flute player too, flautist. Flutist, flautist, flautist, something like that. And um, fluter. Yeah, fluter. <laughs> she's an amazing fluter. Um, <laughs> it we actually met my freshman year, mm. and she introduced me to one of my really great great like, she's. I hold her near and dear to my heart. I love her so much. Mm. But she met... Uh, she le- she introduced me to Kaylee. Okay. And in those... In that little friend group, Kaylee brought in uh, this girl named Jess. Okay. Or this girl named Jez. And... <laughs> who used to call her Jizz. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> her name's Jezreel. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it was always, the Jizz is real. <laughs> Um, high school humor at its yeah. finest. <laughs> Dude, it was just wasteful days of high school girls. <laughs> That's exactly what my high school life was. Mm-hmm. And um, our sophomore year, that was when there was this girl. Her name was Michaela. Mm-hmm. And I knew her in middle school. And she was she was a, she was was a in the color guard uh, of the marching band. So she was like 
super popular, super extroverted, and everyone liked mm. her. What did the color guard do? Uh, did they twirl flags or something? Yeah. The the flags, the rifles, and the sabers. They're basically like the cheerleader side of the Yeah, band. of the marching band, yeah. And They got cute uniforms. Dude, they did. They did. <laughs> Every band has cute uniforms. Yeah, they do. But, um, yeah, she was super popular, and then our sophomore year, she ended up seeing how everyone was kind of fake mm. and so she ended up friend hopping yep and kaylee brought her into our group when like one day oh, at lunch yep. and she stuck she's been stuck with us around. yeah she stuck around and then jesse the last person of the five of us mm. she came our junior year and um maybe that's why misfit groups can like attract people like that it's because like when you're a misfit you're not doing anything to get other people to like you. Yeah. You're just honestly being yourself. Yeah. So there's no fake people amongst misfits. Yeah. Unless they're doing it for a, a, a really dumb reason. But like... There's no reason. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you imagine some punk kid with like a misfit shirt and like like mohawk or something or like right. those goth kids. It's like those... How That's how they really feel inside. They're yeah. not lying to anybody. They're like, this is why I feel. Yeah. And uh, the world needs to get used to it, you know? That's the punk attitude of, like, right. I'm here! You know? Yeah. You know the rest of that, but... Yeah. <laughs> I'll finish it. I'm queer! <laughs> get used to it! <laughs> Happy Pride Month, baby. SpongeBob, Avatar, Korra, let's go. Yeah, but... It started off as a group of three, and mm-hmm. eventually evolved to four, then five. And you had that, like, a senior year, you had that, that super preppy-looking cute girl but she yeah. knew that everyone was real there yeah 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 and not to toot our own horn but like yeah we're yeah. the most real people Ugh. oh hell yeah <laughs> bro i'm the realest bitch on earth oh i kidding. love the misfits <laughs> <laughs> i gotta shake your hand for that dude. <laughs> that was a great joke so um with the whole 16 personalities website they assign titles to different codes so as an isfp you got what was it um explorer yes how do you feel about that like what is there anything that you agree with to that title as an explorer or like like explain like why that um kind of because when i think of an explorer Mm -hmm. i would typically think someone that's extroverted right but i mean there's a certain openness to explorers right you're open to new ideas you're 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 willing to put the energy into finding those new things right but um yeah do, does anything ring a bell um it says that we're very self-reliant and we're very quick think uh we're we're very self-reliant and quick thinking okay we change our minds mm. with minimal regret and we don't second guess our decisions Ah, see, that's what we have in common, I think. Yeah. 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 But that whole, that first part, can you read that first part again? Because I have a theory on how um, you got there. It, minimal regret or the... Be- before that. Before that? Oh. Uh, tend to be self-reliant and mm, quick thinking. Self-reliant. So, okay. do you feel that being the eldest of four siblings, like, formed you that way as a self-reliant person? Yeah. I, I actually... Yeah, my, um, I actually had a talk with my little sister about it Mm -hmm. a long time ago or a while, a while back. Right. Um, about like, this is where I'm coming from of like, yeah, I got to get mine sorted out because, um, if I'm not sorted out, then none of you younger ones are going to be sorted out. Right. 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 And it was, it was more of, um. I was almost forced to grow up Mm -hmm. that since both my parents were working and we were a first generation immigrant immigrant family. Yes. We we were a first generation immigrant family and both my parents were working. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. They're not there. Yeah, they're not there. So I had to step up and actually be the parent to my three younger siblings. Damn. That every day after school, we all sat down at a table and it was homework until everyone was done. And when everyone was done, 
they would just be doing their own thing, just fucking around, watching TV, and mm-hmm. I would be making dinner. Yes. And that was around the time my dad would, um, my come, dad come would home. come home, mm-hmm. and uh, he, yeah, and then my mom would be gone till midnight or something like that. Damn. Yeah. So it really is like. You got to be self reliant because if you're not, yeah, these other three kids are just going to be lost, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of responsibility as an eldest sibling. Yeah, and I was only 11, 12 years old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sh- shout outs to my sister who's eight years older than me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Lu- um, yeah, my younger sister and I are eight years apart. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. That makes sense. So there's like. And there's... she's very self. My, my sister is very self reliant. I'd say because. Yeah. Like. I remember she, not to get too deep into family history, but when she was living on her own and mm-hmm. not really visiting us too much, mm-hmm. I mean, she has, like, stories of just, like, hanging out SF, just, like, either partying or, like, being around certain crowds. Right. And just, like, living it, living it up as a young 20-year-old. Living like Larry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, like, I can't really see myself doing that because I feel the opposite of self-reliant i'm like Mm. more like i need to be around family Mm. because just in case i gotta have someone to look to lean on in in case i need it see i think that's where your sister and i kind of different because that nightlife appeal or that story after story never really appealed to me or what do you mean like well my point though they're like she's having a great time not relying on our fan on our on our parents. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. Whereas I'm more like you know I lived on my own for a year, mm-hmm. and I immediately moved back into my with my mom because I was like, I I know that as the youngest son, mm-hmm. part of my job is to make sure my mom's doing okay, and the only son honestly. So right, because only two of us. But as the youngest and as the son. I knew I'd have to make sure my mom's cool and mm-hmm. I can't just be this self-reliant person just going off to to Vegas and living my own life, you, you know? Mm-hmm. I gotta actually, like, check up on her. And I know that if I live on my own, even if I'm an hour or something away, mm-hmm. that's a whole nother, like, effort to, like, okay, this weekend I'm going over to Vacaville. Right. I'm gonna, you know, spend the weekend with my mom and make sure she's cool. Right. Whereas, like, now that I'm living here, it's like, I got that box checked already. Like, I don't have to worry about it. Mm. And. See, I think for me as the oldest, mm-hmm. I'm responsible for my parents. That I've already taken on the burden that when my parents are old enough to not be able to take care of themselves, mm-hmm. I would want you... them to live with me. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. See, so they'd be reliant on you then. Yeah. So you're self, you're still self reliant, but yeah. the other one's relying on you now. Yeah, or at least at, at that point in time. Yeah, yeah. And so, so as a explorer, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what else did did it did it say? Oh. Did it mention anything that piqued your interest? Um, I want I, I'm curious to see how an introvert plays into being an explorer. We enjoy being free of obligations. Ah. They can where they can indulge themselves or in their inter- or their interests in their own time. Mm. That's me, to the T. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it says they love delving onto something interesting, but their interest tends to wane as soon as something becomes mandatory. Ah, uh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Once it becomes mandatory, then it's like, now I got to put this hat on. Yeah. Ex- instead exactly. Of, instead of going at it at your own time, right? Exactly. Your own pace. And, um, social ingenuine, uh, ingenuine, how do you say that? Genuine? Or, I don't know. Okay, let me see. Oh, shit. Uh, I'm reading social ingenuity. Thank you. Oh, my God. Social ingenuity, yep. This is why I'm taking an English class. <laughs> <laughs> social ingenuity. That's cool. You're first generation, son. <laughs> We're doing pretty good, I'd say. Thank you, thank you. Got that California accent, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if you talk to me long enough, so I found out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I found out that I'm pretty sure my accent came out too when I was talking about my cousins. 
But yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's normal though because that's family. So yeah, that's true. But if you talk to me long enough, and I I will my my Cebuano accent does come out, mm-hmm. or if I'm speaking Cebuano to my parents, and then you switch back to English real quickly. Yeah, yeah. I it shows. I get that. Um, it says. They're spontaneous. Uh, they're spontaneous. Spontaneity. Thank you. They're spontaneous. Oh my god. Spawn. Spontaneity. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's they're a word now. Spontaneity. <laughs> spawn. Spawn to spawn. Te. Te. Ne. Ne. I. I. T. They're spontaneity. Yeah. Oh my. There you go. Their spontaneity draws them to appealing strangers. Oh my god. Draws I, himself too? What? Um their spontaneity draws them to appeal draws them to appealing strangers and interesting experiences. Oh, see, so that just like you were saying before, like typically on default mode you don't want to come up to people. Yeah. But you naturally kind of attract interesting people and then those are the ones you're willing to, to you know, talk to. Yeah. Uh, how, yeah. <laughs> how did you feel then when we when we first met when I when I did that stupid like magic trick with a cup? Dude, I still think about that sometimes <laughs> when I'm driving in my car. <laughs> and... <laughs> okay, okay, story time real quick. For We we met at a choir thing, right? Cause yeah, we were, church. Because you were playing uh, clarinet? Yeah, or I played sax? clarinet. For, no, I played clarinet for the St. Mary's Church Choir. Right, right. And then I was... Was I singing or guitar? You were singing. Singing? Okay. So I was probably... In your barong. Oh, yeah! My old school barong. It's, it might be that one. Anyway. But... So we met... At the church thing. Right. Uh, as choir members. And we had a mutual friend through um, the soprano singer, right? Yeah. And... And the flute player. Right, right. So, we... I remember the, the soprano telling me, like, Oh, you, you can meet Maribel. She's Filipino. Right. And blah, blah, blah. And I remember thinking, like, you must have been, like, fob. Because the way that it came off. Yeah, and, like and my way, name. Like, and your, yeah, your, your name, no, Ding Kong, is like super yeah. fun. <laughs> and like your your body language kind of felt like you didn't want to be there. I didn't. You're like a fish out of water. Yeah. Right. Well, to to be fair, it was 5 a.m. in the morning. Oh, yeah, that too. And On a in school, high school day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, class too that day probably. Yeah. I was there all nine days on school days and I still had work after. So I really didn't want to be there. Oh, my God. You were working at McDonald's at the time already? Yeah. Or... I don't think you had work yet when we first no, met. No, I wasn't at work yet when okay. we first met. But you still didn't want to be there. That's I still didn't want to be there, right, yeah. Because at school. Yeah. Lucky for me, dude. Like, we would just show up and then I would just go home. Yeah, you would go home <laughs> and sleep. Have nothing to do. Yeah. yeah. That was not me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was a sophomore, junior in high school. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Dude, that was so shitty. So, so we met up and we kind of were just friendly as, like, people who had some common things as a choir member right and then like <laughs> did i come off as an extrovert was i like trying to like get buddy buddy right away or do you, what do you remember i i remember being really tired and i remember <laughs> being really annoyed because you were very loud <laughs> so you did come off as an extrovert yeah you did how the tables have turned <laughs> yeah. you found me annoying for being too loud <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> I and now, <laughs> now all I do is give you shit for laughing hella loud. I know. That's you really do. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh. But okay, so I met. So now I'm looking back with with yeah. this information now because I didn't know you were that in a such a bad mood at the time. I just figured like, oh, she's fob or something or whatever. Right. Yeah. And then like, I for, I took this styrofoam cup from hot chocolate <laughs> and like poked my thumb inside. Yeah. And then like. I, I asked you guys, you and the soprano if you wanted to see a magic trick. Right. And I would just like make it look like the cup was levitating. But yeah. Because you guys didn't know that my thumb was in there. Right. And the <sighs> look on your face, dude, was just like, you weren't prepared. Yeah. I really wasn't. Dude, it's, it's the moment that every magician kind of like hopes for of like really getting to someone's head. Like, right. how was he doing that? Yeah, dude. I just remember like, dude, what? Like... <laughs> And immediately, I remember that, like, all the all the annoying feelings that I have of you, 
I was like, in my head, I thought to myself, this dude is a troll. We're going to get along. Oh, I just remember dude. thinking how big of a fucking troll you were back in high school. And immediately I was just, oh yeah, no, we'll, we'll get along. We'll get along. <laughs> Oh man, I'm so I'm I feel so proud. <laughs> Even as a shitty, you know, cynical atheist. Oh my god. I was this guy that was like You made a church I made, girl laugh. I made, I, made, <laughs> I made other people think I was a troll, which yeah. is like kind of a compliment, honestly. Like of all the things to be, right. I'd rather be a troll than like I don't know, some square or something. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Squares are cool. Dude, without even thinking, I'm, I'm, that's already me trolling you right now. Yeah, dude, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's so great. I didn't, I didn't know that coming in. Yeah, to, I, re- <laughs> I remember going to school that, I remember going to school that day, mm-hmm. and I was just, I was telling my friends, I was like, dude, you'll never guess what the fuck happened to me this morning. <laughs> She was like, what, what happened? What happened? And I was like, I saw a magic trick, but it wasn't. And- <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I, so did, did I explain it to you? Did you see? Yeah, that? no. Okay, after okay. after you did that, you were like, oh, my thumb's actually in here. Okay, yeah, so I, I did yeah. give it away. Okay. Yeah, you did give it away. And I was just like, his thumb was in the cup and it looked like it was floating. And my <laughs> friend was like, dude, what kind of fucking morning did you have? And I was just like. I don't know, man. I just went to church. I didn't think I was going to be seeing a magic trick. Yeah, dude. And then I just remember her going, you went to church at 5 a.m.? Mm-hmm. That's weird. Yeah. And I was like... Simbanga B, boy. Yeah. But... Mga re- ang pakajos. <laughs> I just remember telling my friends that... Telling my friends what happened that morning. And... They... They laughed with yeah. me. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. it was... Thinking See, back... That brings me joy, but go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Thinking back. Oh, so thinking back, it was actually the best way to meet you. Dude, that's so great to hear. Yeah. I'm glad. Because <laughs> I, was, I was doing that magic trick a lot. <laughs> just really? With other people just <laughs> fucking around. You, but, never that ki- you never got that kind of reaction? No, like I did it to the soprano and she was just like, hmm? Like she was kind of like, what's going on? Right. But it wasn't like that look of like disbelief. Like I could see in your eyes you're like <laughs> doubting like the laws of physics. Right. <laughs> Just like how is he doing this? Yeah. <laughs> and that was like the best reaction I could have asked for. <laughs> oh man. But but look even then like uh I did see like the introvert side of you there. Yeah. Cuz you're, you know, it it took that mutual friend for us to to actually talk. Yeah. I was I remember walking into the mess hall, just fully prepared, sitting next to my mom and my dad. Mm-hmm. And when she pulled me aside and she... You know, all the kids hanging out. Yeah. Know. Yeah. I felt like I was at a Filipino party, to be honest. We were, though. It's in Mungo Bay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, I yeah, I, I went in there... Um, it was like the odd Chinese family just getting food. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went into the mess hall fully prepared to sit next to my parents mm-hmm. and just eating, getting my fill, getting my fill and just going straight to school. Just dealing with it. Yeah. Like, yeah. But then when she pulled me aside, she was like, oh, here, meet my friend Blake. Mm-hmm. And that was it. We, <laughs> we... <laughs> here, here we are. Was it almost eight years later? <laughs> doing oh a my po- God. Doing a podcast talking about K-pop. Dude. <laughs> Holy fuck. Right? Yeah, we met in 2013. 2013, son. So what, that's seven years? Yeah. Going on seven years, yeah. Whew. Dude. We gotta celebrate our 10 year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Do a K-barbecue and just get hella veggies. Dude, I'm, I'd be down to go to Vegas. <laughs> oh my god. No, Japan. Japan, yes. That's, that's the one trip we're gonna do. <laughs> yes. Until like we're balling, but like. Yeah. That's but, not gonna be for a while. <laughs> Yeah, I I just remember going to school that day, and I was like, I hope that we actually like stay friends and keep in did, touch. Did we have any like music tastes or like similar music tastes at the time? 
I don't think we talked about music at the time. Because the earliest thing I remember us bonding over was like Imagine Dragons and Bo Burnham. And yes. that, was, that was already like, we were already like pretty close friends, like going to um, the youth church thing. Oh, yeah, the young adult. Yeah, the, mini- F- the FCJC. Y- yeah, the young adult ministry. Families for Christ Jesus community. Right. And I remember us bonding at St. Joseph's too, because you were playing. Uh, Oh, for the youth group, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We were playing guitar together for the youth group. Oh, that was, that was fun. We are playing that one song that's, like, really easy to play, but gets all the kids hyped. Yeah. I remember you and me, like, we both got our acoustic guitars on, just, like, walking around the kids, and they're just, like, partying. Yeah, singing, dude. Singing about God. That was the closest thing I could ever get <laughs> to, uh... To playing a show. Yeah. <laughs> to, to playing a show and feeling how, uh, my favorite bands do it. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, like... For a minute, for those three hours. You're a rock star. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Got it in you, man. <laughs> I can't really be the lead. That's fine. I'm a team player, though. I'll play whatever you want me to play. There you go. That's why we get along, too, I think. Like, yeah. There's no, like, heavy ego trying to be the guy. Yeah, because we both know that we have similar... We know we th- we have similarities, mm-hmm. and we know that we have our own downfalls. Yeah. And... We've we've both talked about it that mm. our downfall the other one covers or like weaknesses or yeah or other, yeah 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 that's a great way to put it yeah. our weaknesses are is the other strength other. yeah 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 so I get that. in yeah dude in a way you're kind of my soulmate <laughs> see that's interesting how that works though because you're I S F P I'm yeah. E N F P so like it's like down the middle we're both F P's at the end of it right but I S and E N are the to- two opposites of each other yeah so. There's that balance. We're not totally different, you know. Yeah, there's still some common ground there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and such a humor wise too. Like we la- we always laugh at the same jokes. Yeah, we do. We do. Mm-hmm. And yeah, actually we do. I always know that whenever I hang out with you and whenever I see you, mm-hmm. there's always something to learn. Nice. Even I, if that's what I aim for. Is like, I'm trying to learn as much as I can too. So yeah. it's cool to know that I also offer that. Yeah. Same. Honestly. <laughs> and it's it's nice to know that I still have my comedic timing. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Uh, you also have a bit of that troll. <laughs> I can... Trait. Yeah. But like you cut deep. Yeah. <laughs> like... I knew that. Okay. <laughs> so backstory when I went vegetarian. <laughs> Wait. Backstory what? Backstory of how I went vegetarian. Oh, how, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or when I... I... <laughs> Because I knew that eventually, if I kept talking about it... Oh, you, you were that person of like, hey, did you know I'm a vegetarian? Or like, yeah. Oh, as a vegetarian here. Yeah. But you were just like... I, I felt It felt like you were acting, though. It didn't feel like it was you. Yeah, that. no, no, no. You were the, that was the only time I ever did it. Oh, was so what when were, what, I was with you. What were you doing, though, so... The te- just saying how, how great it was to be a vegetarian and right. how, how everyone should be a vegetarian. But being hella extra about yeah, it. Yeah, being hella extra. And I remember... <laughs> After, like, I think a month and a half Mm. of just finally, or a month and a half of me telling you how great it is of me being a vegetarian, you're like... When I asked the question, of like, you know what you sound like right now? Yeah. Because it's annoying the fuck out of me. Yeah. (laughs) You remember you going, hey, you know, I love you, right? But (laughs) you're getting annoying, dude. (laughs) And I just remember looking at you and just going... Be the meme you dream to be. <laughs> what was the, the punchline again? Do you remember? It, that was the punchline. Be the meme you dream no, to no, be. No, that was afterwards, though. I forgot what it was, though. But... it Because it was like a long build-up. Basically, you... Yeah, it you, was a real... <laughs> so the, the truth was, you did decide to be a vegetarian. Yes, the, I did. The joke that you were living, or the, the, the setup for a joke that you were preparing over weeks and weeks, <laughs> was making it seem like you were this annoying-ass, you know... Yeah anti-whatever yeah you know, i was uh, the annoying la vegan you know? yeah <laughs> that's what so you you recognize that in other people yeah you acted that way to for a build-up yeah and then you had this great punchline we were like in the line of chipotle or something yeah <laughs> and like you i asked you a question i forgot what it was but like you answered it and that was the moment i realized you were just acting yeah <laughs> that it wasn't real yeah you're just doing it to troll me yeah <laughs> and i was the first person i was the only person to like call you out yeah because you were doing this to your family member and your other friends yeah like you're you acting that way and yeah like i remember your family would 
kind of just be either supportive or like, oh, I'm still going to eat meat, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and no one actually like called you and like, you, hey, you're being annoying. Yeah. But like when I did it, you had this great comeback. I forget what it was, but it was it was like you had to be there kind of thing, right? Yeah. And I just remember thinking like, this son of a bitch. This bitch literally just <laughs> did a month and a half of prep <laughs> and build up. For a punchline. Dude, it was the greatest accomplishment in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> or no, it wasn't even 2019. It was the it was the greatest accomplishment in 2020. <laughs> Dude, Dude, I feel like it was be the meme you wish to be. That's what you said after that. Yeah. Cause because once I realized what you were doing. And you made it clear that you're just joking. Yeah. That's when you said, "Be the meme you you want to be." Yeah. And I was like, "That's like that's like the tagline after your punchline." Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's the memorable part. Was like, "Be the meme." Yeah. And I was like, "Dude, she did it. <laughs> she, she went for it." And finally, someone called her out on it, and, and it was hella funny. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> you were seriously you're so weird, dude. dude. <laughs> Normally you're a square, but like in that moment, I'm like, who is this person? <laughs> that that's me learning something new. With yeah. that day of like, I didn't know she had the willingness to go through that. Yeah, just for I'll, a joke. Honestly, after that, I dropped it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't really talk about it that much. Yeah, I was just like, all right, I had my fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I love me. You trolled me pretty good there. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I love me. What's up, Nyan? <laughs> Fancy. Ooh. <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, so going back to the MBTI yes what does it mean to be assertive and turbulent oh so depending on how you answer the question so the test is given out here's a question or here's a scenario mm-hmm. based on your instinct or your default like personality don't think too hard about it mm. answer whether or not you <clears throat> are neutral on it you slightly agree you just agree or you strongly agree and then vice versa whether or not you slightly disagree you mm. just disagree or if you heavily disagree right right and they kind of make it um a point to let you know try to avoid answer- answering neutral too many times oh. or, an- or answering slightly too many times right because the more you answer slightly or neutral the the less sure of yourself you are Mm. That's what it sounds like. So if you're willing to say strongly agree, that means you really know yourself on that thing at least. Right. And if you tend to stay away from answering neutral, then you're more assertive. You know who you are. Uh You're not wishy-washy. Oh. Whereas when you're you're, um, turbulent, think of it with turbulence in an airplane. Uh, You just go... Like, if, if you're in a plane and they say there's going to be some turbulence, what happens to the plane? What happens to you guys? Oh, it shakes. It shakes, right? It's like, it's I not... Just, <laughs> I just thought of that Bill Burr. No, up and down, up and down. Yeah, none yeah, of that that's, shit. Yeah, none of that shit, because that's turbulent. That's not pleasant to, yeah. to, to, do, to deal with, because it's a lot of chaos. Right. You're turbulent. When you're turbulent in psychology, um, or personality psychology terms, it's like, mm-hmm. you're not too sure yourself. Your, your image of yourself is shaky, basically. Mm, oh that's why that's why they say turbulent oh. whereas assertive you're asserting your your dominance you're like of your answer of like i'm definitely this way so for the mbti to work would you have to over analyze the questions no, or you well depends you want to analyze it enough so you you know what the questionnaire what the questionnaire is trying to ask right because you know it, Especially if English isn't your first language, or if it's something something that you're not interested in, mm-hmm. like literature and stuff, then like <clears throat> it's easy to misinterpret questions. Right. And a good example would be like one of the questions being, "Do you see yourself as above others, or like do you see yourself as better than other people?" Yeah. I remember you were saying that you interpreted that as I have it better than other people. Like right. I have a room. I have a yeah. American household. I have yeah. a cat. That's how I justified it. That. I have it better than other people, therefore I am better than other people. Yeah, see, that's not what they're asking. Yeah. Which is, yeah, now I... Now you know. Yeah, now but I like, know. But you gotta you gotta understand the question enough to, like... You gotta analyze it so that you know what they're asking, which is... It's not about what do you have that makes you better. It's like, in your... On, in your inner heart, 
like if if you let's say like this person or coworker is has this thing or mm-hmm. has this uh problem and then if if you see that you're above them then you're like oh that that person has that problem that's such a like needless problem like i would know the answer already or about that yeah I, I, if anything i would help them out because i know i'm better and my answer is going to help them out yeah i think i am kind of that way mm-hmm. i think mostly because people come to me for advice a lot of the times Mm-hmm. And to me, the fact that you value my opinion and the fact that you're coming to me mm. shows me that I have more wisdom and more knowledge. Right, right. For me to bestow oh, on well, you. Not even them coming to you. You just know that they have this problem. Right, Do yeah. You, you have that urge to kind of like butt in and be like, hey, you could do this because I know better than you. Yeah. It's kind of crass, but like that's kind of what's going on, right? It, it is, Cause yeah. Because think of the opposite of that. Let's say this coworker has a problem and you don't see yourself as above people. If anything, you see yourself under people, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're not, you don't have the same amount of worth or value. Right. Then it's like whatever advice you would want to give wouldn't be helpful to them because they probably know better than you anyway. So you just back off. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, definitely. When I, uh, when I was a manager, at, when I was a shift lead at Freebirds, I had big dick, I had big dick energy. <laughs> I did. Right, right. Everyone came to me for everything, and whenever I saw something that wasn't right, and I, I would try to fix. I would fix it, and mm-hmm. I would tell them to do something. Immediately, it was fixed. Right, right. Yeah. There you go. So, that's what that. That's a totally different thing than I have it better than other people. Yeah, it is. Because <laughs> I mean, as Americans, we have it better than like ninety-seven percent of everybody else. Yeah. Say. Yeah. And that's kind of an exaggeration, but not too far off. Yeah, it's not too far off. So, um, yeah, so you you gotta like you want to analyze the question enough that you understand what they're actually asking. Right. You gotta know too. You gotta know yourself mm-hmm. enough so that you can answer honestly, mm-hmm. and not because when I first tried taking that test, I would just answer how I wanted to be, not how you were, not how I actually was. So I wasn't I wasn't looking into real life experiences to 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 compare. Right. I was just answering. Well, my ideal version of me would answer this, so that's what I would answer. And I got different different results for that. Right. It wasn't until I started working and like really observing how I respond to certain situations mm-hmm. when I started saying, "Oh, I don't really act this way. I'm more like I thought I was much more of a people pleaser mm-hmm. than I actually am." Cuz mm-hmm. we're kind of raised in this way of like you got to be harmless. You got to be, you don't want to be toxic masculinity, right? You don't want to have that toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. You want to be a people pleaser. That's what our school system kind of like molds us to be like. Right. So that's the default, like, that's the personality <clears throat> traits that we are raised in as a, as a culture, as a society. Mm-hmm. But default wise, I don't really think I am much of a people pleaser as I was, as I thought I was. Can you explain why? So one of the questions they ask is, uh disagree agree or disagree mm-hmm. sometimes in life it's so it's okay to step on other people to get ahead mm. so my first time taking that question i was just thinking like autopilot you know good schoolboy good christian schoolboy mode of like oh no it's never good to step on other people so, oh, I, put so disagree- you put disagree. I put disagree uh-huh. but then like knowing myself after working <clears throat> and knowing that in my heart like i would i'm the guy that will ask for a raise Mm. You fully well knowing it's more than what these other people who deserve it. But mm. like, I gotta get mine, dude. Like, if the opportunity is there, I'm gonna take it. So oh. I'm kind of stepping on other people, right? Right. That's not me. And I was okay with it. I was like, you know what? I'm showing initiative. I'm showing that I. This is how I think I value myself. Mm-hmm. And if they agree, the pros and cons is pro. I get paid more, and mm-hmm. I get kind of a little bit more prestige from the HR. Right. Or the office side of it, because like this guy knows what he's worth. Yeah. And the con is, I'm I kind of I can be seen as a dick. Mm-hmm. Like that's kind of, that's not really much of a con to me. Like I don't really care mm. about being a people pleaser like that. Dicks is dicks. What are dicks and assholes? They're not. Right. They're not people pleasers. Yeah. If anything, they're they're just straight up trolls. Right. Right. So, or they're they're more. It's more easy for them to be trolls. Right. So. Mm. So. Now, now that I knew myself after working, I was able to take that test again and answer, oh, no, I agree. I agree mm-hmm. that um, 
it, it is okay to step on other people to get ahead, you know, uh, you know, with, with, with certain parameters, you know, yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. want to be freaking George Soros, you know, just <sighs> toppling down entire continents of governments <laughs> and economies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not at that level, obviously. Yeah. See, I think that's where we're kind of both different mm. because I've always been, honestly, it's also kind of a downfall where I expect everyone to value their employees right and if you don't think i'd if you don't come to terms with me getting this raise then i never deserved a raise to begin with oh yeah that's complete opposite of what i'm thinking yeah i'm like i know what what i want to get paid yeah with me i was okay with just getting the minimum manager shift lead salary right at this godforsaken burrito place <laughs> you know, he, i remember you telling me about your whole um uh raise drama like getting a pay raise drama right yeah of like you actually stuck your neck out and said i think i should be paid this the guy refused right yeah and then um so at that moment when he refused where you're like well i guess i'm not really worth it he must know what he's talking about yeah mm -hmm. that was it and then that was when that was kind of when I had a little, not a little, it was a really big existential crisis. Existential crisis. Yeah, where to the point where I genuinely started doubting my skills and my abilities at my workplace. Ah. That since I'm not getting, I it never clicked that it was going to be a logistical issue. Mm. Which it actually was? I have no idea okay, to okay, this sorry, day. Okay, go ahead. But I honestly, I don't think it was. Okay. But <clears throat> it never occurred to me that it was going to be a logistical issue or anything like that. I just saw it as, he doesn't think I deserve this raise. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, I'm doing something wrong. But in reality, do you think he saw your value and just didn't want to spend the money? I don't know, because when I quit... Uh, well, yeah, when you quit, when you quit, right? Uh, or when you're threatening to quit or something, right? He was like, oh... If you come back, I'll give you that raise you're asking for, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what he. That's what he said. Yeah. So he did know your value. He, because if he didn't believe that, he wouldn't say come back and I'll give you the raise. Yeah. He'll just say don't even come back. Yeah. But he wanted. He saw the value. Yeah. He just didn't want to spend the, the company money to to give you that raise. Yeah. Which is kind of shitty. So that's kind of toxic because if yeah. he didn't know how you think. He's basically responsible for you feeling shitty about your, you know, like doubting your abilities. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't until that when we hung out with her um, and we got Boba, when she said that she missed me or like she, her and this other shift lead mm -hmm. were telling me that they missed me and they wanted me to come back. Right. That was when... They, they did value you. Yeah, they did value me. Mm -hmm. It was just upper management that didn't. Mm -hmm. Or... They did, or they but, did, but they didn't want to pay for it. Yeah, right. which also was shitty. And the reason why I stayed quit, the the reason why I never went back. Yes, was is, because of how the upper management treated you. Yeah, it was. They're and, basically exploiting you at that point. Yeah, I was their bitch for two years, dude. Yeah, that I was. Sucks. I was the yes man for the <sighs> longest time. And remember when um, everyone was quitting left and right? I was working six day weeks. Yeah, you were hustling, dude. Six day weeks for 11, 12 hour days. Mm -hmm. I was basically working what a GM should be working. Damn. Yeah. And I was doing split shifts. Like everything, dude. I did, I did the shifts no one wanted to do. And I basically became the glorified floater that mm. whenever someone called out, I would be the person to come in. And then there's one dude who does less than you who gets paid more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was the kitchen manager. Yeah, see, I wouldn't stand for that shit. Like, yeah. Not to toot my own horn. Right. But I'm like, well, fuck y'all, I'm quitting. Yeah. And I didn't know that he got paid more than me until he brought it up. When he was ah, saying... yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. When he was telling me... It was me and him in the kitchen, and he was telling me about how he wanted a raise. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of was... I made a joke, and I was like, man, a raise would be nice. I haven't had a raise in... I haven't had a raise in about eight months, mm -hmm. or like a year. And he looked at me and he was like, really? I got a 50 cent raise like two months ago. Mm -hmm. And now I want another one. And I went, what? Mm -hmm. I have, you're telling me as a shift lead 
who knows how to do your job mm -hmm. and you don't know how to do mine, mm -hmm. you immediately got a raise three months after you got hired in. And now, five months later, you want another raise where I've been hustling as a shift lead for a year and haven't gotten a raise yet. So would you say this is a, a frustrating issue for you to go through? Yeah, it was. <laughs> it very much was. And I talked to my manager about that, and all he did was give me a 25 cent raise. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, that's fair. Like, oh, literally. So you're already like... Oh, you took it like yeah hey, that's a raise i'll, I'll take that yeah mm -hmm. in my head i was like well that's a win that's 25 more cents that yeah. i'm making uh, if you're playing blackjack that's a win yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was never much of a i don't game. know if, like doing all those split shifts and everything warrants just a 25 cent raise, yeah you know yeah but yeah you're right it is still still a win you know yeah it was still kind of a win but it still bothered me that he didn't know how to do my job, but I knew how to do everyone else's job. Mm -hmm. And So, by definition, your value was higher. Yeah, and not to toot my own horn, but I was a better kitchen manager than him. Mm -hmm. That I always got complimented from the shift lead that whenever I was in the kitchen, they wouldn't have to worry about anything. And my mentor even said that. How much of that do you think comes from also being the eldest of, siblings, of four siblings? Oh, a lot. Right? A lot. I can imagine, like, if you're... I, I know how affectionate you get with your coworkers that are cool with you. Right. So I'd imagine like the ones who you're cool with, even the ones you're not cool with, you 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 see as siblings in a way. Yeah. Of like you're this family of this this restaurant and yeah. You see each other all the time, just like family does. Yeah. You you know how to get other people to follow your lead, kind of right? Yeah, I do. I do. And I always walked in with my head held with my head held high. Mm -hmm. And when he said when my GM wasn't willing to give me that raise, I never felt that feeling immediately just went away. That every single time I had to go to work, I dread it. And yeah. that was when... That's the thing with asking for raises, dude. It's like, if your HR knows what you're doing, or I'm not sure if you guys had an HR department, but like, mm -hmm. if the person who decides that stuff like is talking to you about how much you want for a raise it's like you gotta ask for the amount that will make it so that you would be thrilled to go to work yeah and i felt like when i was working in fremont i had the base pay that we started off as contractors mm -hmm. and then when i started negotiating for a pay raise once i became a full employee right i knew that i probably deserved a dollar and a half or two dollar raise mm -hmm. but i've decided i might as well ask for a three or four dollar raise just to see how hap what, what happens mm -hmm. and i got a three dollar raise nice so like that's kind of that intuition or like a shot in the dark kind of thing like i don't know how it's gonna sound i mean i was doing a pros and cons thing i guess of like mm -hmm. so this is the i guess the thinking side the right. pros and cons is pro i get a three or four dollar raise which is a big bump Right. And con is I don't get the raise and just the HR person thinks that I'm a dick or something. Mm. And I was just like, well, the pros honestly overweigh the con on this one. So yeah, let's go for it. And yeah. that, that might be more thinking side, but intuition wise, you know, I just asked, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a calculator or like, right. I didn't know what other people were getting paid. Yeah. I was just like, well, I'm at here. Could I get four dollars more? Yeah. And they're like, you can get three. Like, oh, cool. Yeah, let's do that. Mm. Cause I I knew I deserved maybe one or two dollars more. Mm. But I was like, you know, I could yeah. I could step on other people to get ahead. Right. And that's okay. Yeah. Cause you know. Yeah. It's all about number one, son. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I think that's kind of. From a manager standpoint, I always made it a point to tell my coworkers how great of a job they were doing. Mm, and that's good. Even when they were shitty, I always found ways to still boost up their confidence. You know that. Yeah. Hey, you're like you're doing great. Keep it up, bud. You know. I like hearing that too. Like as a worker, I'm not sure what part of the MBTI test this would fall under, but. 
I definitely respond really well to positive reinforcement or yeah. like any kind of acknowledgement that that I'm doing my job well or that like I'm even exceeding yeah. in some things. Yeah. Like knowing that someone else noticed. I just want to know that someone else notices the effort I'm putting in. Yeah. And that sh- makes me strive to do even better. Yeah. Honestly, if I had gotten that acknowledgement from so <laughs> they might not they might not have closed down. <laughs> probably no if like if i had gotten that kind of acknowledgement from my upper management i probably wouldn't have even asked for a raise i wouldn't have even oh, thought of it just the vote verbal yeah. um acknowledgement was enough for him, right? yeah, yeah that was that was enough for me mm-hmm. and when it finally wasn't i just needed them to prove that i was still valuable and when that didn't happen i just and they're being toxic by waiting till the last moment of like yeah. can you come back yeah twice yeah <laughs> but and also from a manager's perspective you're more open to change that sure. when you tell someone that they're doing a good job or you notice that like I, I remember I was training this newbie mm-hmm. and fuck I don't know what okay I'll just call them they them but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say the process of what you just said. <laughs> He's like, fuck. He, uh, uh, sh- uh Z. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, at the time. Okay. She was, uh, she was new, mm-hmm. right? And so, when I was training them, uh, yeah, when I was training them, they were telling me about how, or I was showing them how, how my way of efficiently doing it. And I told them too, I was like, Hey, mm-hmm. this is how I do things. It works for me. Yeah. Just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And you're probably going to have three other people showing you how to do this thing. And every single time will be different. See, that's so valuable information right there. Yeah. As far as like someone who, as someone who seeks out learning new things. Mm-hmm. knowing that there's other ways other people do it yeah just kind of like hey you know you don't have to follow exactly what i do yeah but it works for me if we are similar enough maybe it'll work for you yeah exactly right and overall at the end of the day the goal is to make sure that the line is clean trashes are taken out and you sweep and mop mm-hmm. that's the end goal how you achieve that is completely up to you yeah just as long as you do it before ten forty-five or 11 Cause that's when I want to go. <laughs> see, see. So if someone said that to you, you'd be like, "Oh, cool. I got, I got it. You know, I yeah. got it down." Yeah. See, there's other people though who would have different MBTI codes than us. Right. Probably in the F and P stuff, but like, they would prefer like, do I use the mop at a 45 degree angle or? To, yeah. You know, like they they get so minute with the details yeah. of like, how do you want me to do it? I want to do yeah. it right. I want to please you. Yeah. And mm-hmm. to be honest, those were the best people to train. Because I could mold them to be me. The ones who were like detail oriented. Yes. Yeah. Because I also am very detail oriented, and the more and I I always told my trainees the more questions you ask, the happier I will be. Right. Yeah. That's important. Yeah, and that also opened up the door to me or them to, them showing me or my trainees showing me new ways to make things more efficient. Yeah. And oh, they with, bring it to you. Yeah, they bring it to me. Nice, nice. Because. Um, I was the type of, thank you. I was the type of shift lead that at the end of every shift or even before we closed, Mm -hmm. I would always tell my, I always told my coworkers how, how grateful I was for them. Mm -hmm. And like, and we, whenever we had powwows and we had pre-shifts meetings, I was, I always try to get everyone pumped. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And I always tell them if you have, if you have anything new to tell me, just tell me. And we are, we are Walmart, Walmart, <laughs> right? But yeah. And because of that, whenever they would show me something new or, um, I remember that, uh, there was, there was this dude that I had trained in the kitchen and for, I think for like a solid year, I was cleaning the grill how I normally would clean it. Sure. But then he showed me this completely different way and I was just like, dude, fuck yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And ever since then, I've been doing that. And I remember him walking up to me one night and he was like, no one has actually taken my opinion and put it into action. Until you. Yeah. And he was like, thank you. Dude, yeah, man. When right? You're, when you're open-minded that way, that's that's a blessing. Yeah. When you're closed-minded and you're and you're just like, I got to do it my way. Yeah. That's an insult. Yeah. Like, you're wrong. Yeah. You're doing it wrong because you are a wrong person. Yeah. You got to do it my way because I'm the right person. That's how they will felt. That's how they listen. That's how they hear it, you know? Yeah. But, like, as an open person, it's like, oh, here, this is more efficient. And yeah. you can try it out. Yeah. And you're like, oh, let me try it. Like, oh, it does work. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, and if it, it works. Do- and if it doesn't it. work and you're like, I'm not getting it, you go, I'll just go back to what I was doing. Yeah. I'm still getting paid, so. Yeah, exactly. And, like, to me, that was something I never got from upper management. Damn. So basically what I was lacking, I, what I was lacking, lack for, for a better term, affection from them, I was okay. giving to my coworkers. Right, yeah. Makes because sense. Because if I wasn't getting them, that they definitely weren't getting it. Mm. Oh, so, for sure, yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of that person. And... It just went to show that I was actually good at what I did because till this day, my coworkers still tell, like my old coworkers still tell me how I much. Miss you. Yeah. Yeah. Even on Snapchat, dude, when I show up in their timeline, like two, three years ago, they still tell me they miss me. Yeah. See? <laughs> so you left an impact, you know? Yeah. You showed them what, like, what a, what, how, what, okay. Like the, the benefits of, of good communication Mm-hmm. is so far reaching that like even a year and a half after you left or like even after the whole restaurant closed down yeah those people are still out there yeah and they still remember you yeah and we were all misfits oh we okay. were yeah food crew right yeah our general manager was an ex-con our, what does that mean uh, ex-convict? He was an ex- yeah he was an ex-convict <laughs> he was an ex-convict and he had a tattoo of a mushroom smoking a joint like on his forearm for the world to see mm-hmm. and our um our agm was a rapper and um super hot fire yeah i spit that <laughs> and my mentor she was a dancer who had sup- who's super comp- who has super conservative parents but she dates black guys mm. <laughs> and misfit yeah in her own way yeah and a lot of the people that came through were all stoners. They yep. were all drug addicts at one point. They yep. they were all alcoholics. They were in AA groups. Mm-hmm. and Or they were just high school kids who didn't really... The only reason why they had a job was because they didn't have friends to hang out with after school. Damn. Oh, they were the misfits at school, too. Yeah. 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 And so, like, Freebirds free <laughs> was a safe haven. Kind of like you with McDonald's. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Oh, I wish I applied at Freebirds before McDonald's, dude. My, maybe my life would have been different. Maybe. But, um, yeah, it was... Freebirds was definitely a group of misfits on our own. Mm. And I love that about us. We were just, like, this ragtag group of freaking teenagers and mid 20 year olds and our leader was an ex-convict <laughs> <laughs> it was great damn that sounds like a comedy um script right there i mean i've told you stuff of what happens at work yeah it's pretty funny yeah yeah you got you got some cool people going in and out yeah or if they're not cool at least they're interesting yeah like for yeah. all the people that you complained about at least they were like memorable yeah <laughs> but yeah so cool to see how like personality psych plays into you know like high school life and being a misfit and and especially like being in a work environment that's when like personality psych really comes in handy. yeah it does because you start to see how you vibe with other people how you don't vibe mm-hmm. you know all, all the confidence issues or like self-esteem issues comes in yeah it makes and breaks you dude yeah honestly well glad you're out of that hellhole now <laughs> thank you you know you're we're, we're both like kind of on the up and up as far as like career paths go yeah we're a lot we're a lot less aimless than we used to be yeah we definitely got some goals set now thanks to that and i think personality side plays a part of that because now you know having the goal is cool and all but how to get there you got to know yourself yeah and 
I remember too when I first started taking the MBI tests. Yeah. I was always turbulent. Oh, the MBTI. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now every I think this is how I know that my personality has Solidif- pretty much solidified. Mm-hmm. Yeah, solidified. Yeah. Is that I for the last year and a half or 2 years actually I've been taking the test and I I still get ISFP and I get assertive. Okay. Yeah. And it's consistent now because yeah. you know yourself. Yeah. And if anything, my assertive has or my that turbulent side has gotten smaller and smaller the percentage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cuz I remember when when you when I first showed you that test, yeah. You and I got the same you got the same score or the same, the same result that I did. Mm-hmm. And I think that might be because we were hanging out so much. Like maybe some like what I would have answered kind of rubbed off on you, I guess. Mm-hmm. But now that you're like, you can take the test multiple times, right? So mm-hmm. now yeah. it's like you get a consistent result that you feel more accurately yeah. describes you, right? Right. So that's cool. So next episode we gotta <laughs> we gotta mention like um, how the MBTI test like goes along with idol groups, I'd say, because I I think that's super interesting to see like what. That what, would be, yeah. When MBTI codes come out a lot, like, for a nine-member group, for to have three members have the same code kind of says, like, okay, what is it about that code that lends that personality to be more successful as an idol group, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's the thing about, like, fandoms and, and idols is that there's always an obsession of, like, every single ounce of their personality and right. how they express it. Like, even in... um. In Japanese girl groups, they'll show like their blood type because yeah. their blood type plays a lot into how they conceptualize personality. Yeah. I heard that in Japanese culture, it's common for you to have a resume and for you to put in your blood type. Yeah, that's true because it's part of that personality um, gauging or like, oh, uh, you know, like measuring. I have I don't know my blood type. I think I'm O positive or something. I forget what, but. Mm. I read I read their description of it and I was like yeah that's me that's pretty accurate to who, who I am. Oh dang. Yeah, but yeah, that's, that'll be for next time hopefully. Thanks to all the listeners for staying out with us this long. It's gonna be a long one this week. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Much love. Peace, love, and prosper.